praise the Lord and uh, a wonderful Sunday to each one of you. Now, we praise God that uh, tomorrow we begin the 40 day fast, which we do every year. And tomorrow is the uh, beginning of a wonderful time of fasting and prayer as we enter into all that God has for us. We praise God that nothing is held back by God and nothing is delayed by God. We must trust in the timing of God. We must trust in the mercies of God. You notice that throughout the whole Bible, God has always intervened in His fullness of time. There are times and places in the Bible that it looks like God was holding back, but it was more God giving His people a chance to trust in Him. And as we enter into 2024 tomorrow, uh, those on the other side of the world, they might enter it the following day uh, because of time differences. But we praise and thank God for all that He has given to us. In the book of Mark chapter 11, it speaks about how that when we pray, we must believe that we have received, not will receive. After many years as a Christian, we must understand the difference between Hope and faith. Hope says continually, I will receive, I will receive, I will receive. Faith says, I have received. I have received. <laughs> Where is your faith? And the difference between faith and hope, <clears throat> faith sees the spiritual. Hope sees only the natural. When you evaluate the year 2023, don't evaluate it in a natural and see what you have or have not received based on the natural. Evaluate based on the spiritual if you are truly a spiritual person. Unless you're bathed in Christ with spiritual eyes not being opened. Throughout the whole Bible, the men and women of God who have worked and walk successfully with God, see the spiritual from the time of Enoch to the time of Noah, who speaks of things in the spiritual that they have received, rather than speak of things they have not received yet in the natural. The difference between faith and hope, one is in the future continuously, one is already received as a past, present, do not evaluate what you have received or not received based on the natural for your year 2023. Unless the things of the natural are more important to you than the spiritual. Unless the things in the natural are more real to you than the spiritual. Have you counted all the things that God has given to you in the spiritual, established for you in the spiritual? Remember, Joseph received all the blessings of the whole planet as it promises in his two dreams <laughs> nearly 20 years before he actually has it in the natural. He believed the dreams. God sometimes has already put the direction that we are going in the natural by putting things into us in the spiritual. 10 years before you receive the things in the natural, you probably receive it in the spiritual. And if you don't acknowledge the things you receive in the spiritual, your faith is lacking. Jesus has always acknowledged what he received in the spiritual way before natural occurs. Men and women of faith do not see the natural alone, but they see the spiritual. Just like the Apostle Paul mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says, we see in the spiritual. And he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we read this verse in the last passage in verse 16. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Not forgetting Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. 
Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are not seen were made of things, were not made of things which are visible, implying they are made of things which are invisible. Have you counted all the spiritual things God has blessed you with this year? Have you counted all the direction that God has marked into your life by spiritual impartation? When you're marked in a certain direction, like David, probably he was around the age of 15 when God anointed him to be king. 15 years later, he became the king over one tribe. 7.5 years later, he became the king over all Israel. Have you not heard, have you not read the Bible, that you receive in the spirit before you receive in the natural? And if today, on the last day of the year, you refuse to acknowledge that you have already received, you refuse to acknowledge what God has already given, you have just delayed further the manifestation of God in your life. God has been waiting so many years for you to acknowledge you have received. But he keeps saying, I have not, I have not, I have not, I have yet to, I have yet to. You live a life of hope, not a life of faith. <clears throat> Are you a man or woman of faith? Faith speaks before it manifests. Faith acknowledges before you feel, see, or touch it. Rise up to your fullness. Reject your doubts. Reject the things that your senses tell you in the natural. Become a man or woman of faith. <clears throat> Let the word of God be more real to you than the physical. Rise up, take possession, acknowledge, receive. What has God given you in the year 2023 in the spiritual? If you say, I do not know, my next question is, do you hear God? What rhema has he spoken to you or from January the 1st to December 31st, your ears are dull. You cannot hear the rhema of God. Then the next question, are you a sheep of Jesus? Jesus says, my sheep, hear my voice. You wage the spiritual battle by the word of God, by the rhema God has given to you. If God says, you have it, you have it. Way before Abraham, Possess and see the whole of Canaan. God says, I have made you. I have given to you. Well, what God has given, no man can take it away from you. Only you can give it away by your disobedience, by your doubts, by your lack of faith. God told Adam and Eve that you are made in my image. The enemy came and told them, would you like to be like God? Just by entertaining that thought, they make decisions. They surrendered the power and authority that God gave them to the enemy. Satan told Jesus in Luke chapter 4, this has been handed, given to me, the authority on the earth. Who handed it to him? Adam and Eve, because they did not believe they had received. Before you cross midnight today into the new year, please acknowledge that you have received at least one time with your mouth rather than keep confessing what you see in the natural. When will you learn? When will you start the walk of faith instead of keep walking the walk of hope? Will you start saying you have received then you begin the walk of faith and you will find victories. Believe you have received. Mark 11. And you shall have them. 
Now, God knows the difference between you shall have and believe you have received. But God looks in your heart and in your spirit to see what your soul, your mind, and your mouth confesses. For what you confess is what will remove that mountain that you have always kept seeing in your life. That mountain is removed because you believe the words that you have spoken. And the words that you must speak must come from your spirit and not the natural. You must walk the walk of faith, not the walk of hope. The difference between faith and hope is faith sees the spiritual and believe they have received. Hope keeps saying, I have not received, it is still out there. Are you a man or woman of faith? Or a man or woman of doubt? Are you double-minded? Or are you single-minded? The test is your soul. Your spirit sees in the spiritual. Your soul must choose between seeing the spiritual or seeing the natural. Your soul's choice will determine what the year 2024 is to you and all the rest of the decades. We must rise to become men and women of faith who anguish the enemy through words of faith. The sword of the spirit in your armor that defeats the enemy is the rhema of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, when it leaves the armor that we have, having done all, we stand. But we stand speaking the rhema of God. It says here, after putting all the whole armor, verse 17, take the armor of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God. Your only weapon in the whole armor is your sword. And the sword is a rhema sword. Have you been speaking the rhema of God in your life? Each time you speak it, you cut and chop the enemy to pieces. It is your only weapon. The rest are defensive. This is your only offensive weapon. When the devil, then Jesus, only three temptations were recorded towards the end. The rest of the 40 days were not recorded. But it is like a likewise situation. Every time that he speaks, the devil also said, it is written, an abuse of the Logos. And then Jesus always said, it is written. The rhema that God has in your life is your spiritual sword. Have you ever even taken it up? The spiritual sword that God gave you is not using, used by your hand. It's used by your vocal cords and your voice. By speaking the word of God, you release the kingdom of God in your life. What should Peter say after Matthew 16? He says, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Should Peter keep saying, uh, I've not received the kingdom of God yet. I've not received the kingdom of God yet. I've not received the kingdom of God yet. Or should Peter say, I have received the keys of the kingdom of God. What should he be saying? And what should you be saying? Open your eyes. Look at all that God spoke to you as a rhema in the year 2023. And though your physical might not manifest yet, you are required, nay, you are commanded to speak as if it is already a perfect chance event. Believe that you have received and you shall have it. God knows the difference between the manifestation and the act of faith. But without faith, you cannot please God. Like Higgin once mentioned, you can weep, you can cry, you can be heartbroken, you can burst out in tears for a Continually, you can moan, you can groan, but you don't have faith. The mountains, they cannot be moved. You practically can live and die in that mountain if you don't have faith. 
Only faith can move that mountain. And men and women of God through the Bible has spoken the rhema God gave them. Even when the whole world does not believe, they believe. Even when all around them does not acknowledge who they are, what God has given, they already acknowledge it. That is why God is pleased with those who believe His Word. This whole planet was built out of God's Word. Every physical thing, atom and molecule you see around is built by God's Word. How do you think God is going to build the new realities in this physical world that we live in? Through His Word. His Word that is sealed in your heart. His Word that you, He allows you to speak forth out of your mouth. The world around you will change. The realities that were the realities of the past will be changed into the new realities in line with the will of God and the kingdom of God. There's a place in time, in a time of counseling, in a time of prayer, to acknowledge your fear and your uh, doubts. But once you go through those stages and complete it, there is no place for doubts or double-mindedness. Thank you, Father, for all that you have spoken. Thank you that we have received your breakthrough in all dimensions and in prosperity to establish your 10,000 churches and 24-hour praise and worship centers. Thank you, Father, that we have received all that you have given unto us in the Spirit. And we command the natural, the natural mountain to move to become the reality that you reveal to us in the Spirit. In our reality, the richest person on earth is not what the world is saying. In our reality, the richest people on earth is the people of God, who in Isaiah 60 has taken all the wealth of the world upon themselves. That is our reality that we command to be upon this earth. We thank you, Father God, that we have open visions to work with your angel. We have the power of wealth on this earth and we have power over all sickness and diseases. We thank you, Father, that we will do miracle services, bring forth the works of Jesus and the greater works of Jesus. We thank you and praise you, Father, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Now on this Sunday, we continue on the theme of the presence of God. Last week, we spoke about what different people saw and heard and experienced when the presence of God was upon them. Today, we're going to speak about the presence of God in three dimensions, in spirit, soul, and body. The presence of God, like the Ark of the Covenant, is always in the spirit, in the Holy of Holies within us. And from time to time, it can manifest in the spirit and in the soul. And as God permits, the presence of God can manifest in the spirit, soul, and body. Now, the presence of God, understand this, can never manifest just in the physical nor can it just manifest in the soul. In order to manifest in the soul, it must manifest in the spirit and soul. There must be a stirring in the spirit for it to be enough to manifest in the soul. And for the presence of God to manifest in the physical, there must be a stirring in the spirit, soul, and then body. It is always from the spirit that the presence of God manifests. Remember, it doesn't just manifest in the body. To manifest in the body, it must manifest in the spirit and then soul and then body. So it has a two-dimensional manifestation to manifest in the physical and to manifest in the soul. It must always manifest in the spirit first before it can manifest in the soul. It never manifests just in the soul or just in the body. The law of God determines that it must manifest in the spirit, then in the soul, and then in the body. Now, that means that the presence of God can be just manifest in the spirit alone or in the spirit and soul or in the spirit, soul, and body. These are the three possible manifestations. So let's consider first that like the Ark of the Covenant that's been given to the Israelites, the presence of God is always there in the Holy of Holies, which represents our spirit. The Holy Place represents our soul. The outer court represents our body. So, day or night, 24 hours a day, when they look at the tabernacle or look into the temple, the presence of God is always there. And they can seek God there. They call upon God's name there. 
because God is always present in the Spirit. And Jesus revealed himself after his atonement in the Spirit. Like the Israelites, we have received the Ark of His Covenant, our Lord Jesus Himself. And we were born again in the presence of God in Jesus. He has now, in the New Testament, since the outpouring at Pentecost, been outpoured upon all flesh. He is now given to the spirits of man, citizens of heaven, the spirits of man make perfect. Born again, and eternally, perpetually, the presence of God after Jesus' resurrection is always in the Spirit. And day or night, if you want to know the presence of God, you can go into the Spirit realm and meet Jesus, the Ark of the Covenant, face to face. He is Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. In the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, it tells us in the benediction, in verse 22, the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So number one, the presence of God can manifest in the spirit. And we are spirit, soul, and body, and especially the newborn spirit. Through the spirit, we can always 24 hours a day experience the presence of God. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20, Again I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together, in my name, and here we all are gathered together in his name. I am there in the midst of them. So Jesus is always with us in the Spirit. 24 hours a day, he hears every word we speak. He reads every thought we think. He discerns the intents of our heart and mind. He empathizes with every feeling we feel. And I always challenge a person when they don't believe the presence of God in this manner. And, you know, people will say, God is not here. I don't feel the presence of God. It's based on their feeling. I say, okay, if you think God is not here, why don't you scold God now? <laughs> he, he, he will hear me. You just said he didn't hear you. See, we're all negatively geared because of sin nature. When we want to experience the presence of God, <coughs> everything within you denies His presence. But your challenge to do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing. You're afraid that God hears you because we know that God is watching 24 hours a day. His angels, the watches are recording. Now you know why you have to speak the rhema of God even before you experience the natural manifestation? There are angels called watches. <coughs> they record every word you speak. And you remember how in Revelation they say uh, uh, in, in the bowls are the prayers of the saints. Every prayer you speak, and even when you're not praying, when you speak, your words are recorded. You say, prove to me the Bible that every word is recorded. Yes. We can. In the Bible, it tells us, especially by our Lord Jesus Christ, when He speaks, about the words that we speak. The Bible tells us it's called the power of words. And this is in the Gospels. In Matthew chapter 12, it says, a good man in verse 35 out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. <clears throat> and evil men out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Do not be deceived. No matter how a person looks like they're nice or they're not nice, if their words and their actions 
create destruction and evil in other people or destroys people, they are evil. Only evil people can think of evil thoughts and evil things. No matter how nice-looking, kind-looking, dosa-looking a person is, if their action is to create destruction of other people or in other people, if they're always talking, destroying with their words, other people, class them as evil, black, dark, and equal to the devil. No matter how dosa-looking they are. Evil can only come out from evil people. Or people who are chosen to become evil like the devil. Only the devil kills, steal, and destroy. And all humans that do so are equal to the devil no matter how innocent looking they are. Reject them as you would the devil. They will have their judgment in the lake of fire. If you are truly a good person, you cannot allow evil to flow through you. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. And Jesus said, but I say to you that for every idle word a man may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, not just by your action, by your words, you will be justified. By your words, you will be condemned. This is a passage that tells you that God is seeking to create the new world, the new reality through His words flowing through us. In the first creation, God directly speaks and creates all things. In His second recreation, He now speaks through His word in us. He gave us His word, the Rema, and we speak His Rema and create the new reality. In my reality, we are the billionaires, trillionaires, not what the world is saying now. That reality is not my reality. I reject it. The reality I live in is Isaiah chapter 60. We have the power of wealth on this earth. And this world system will be broken down and rebuilt according to the word of God. God is recreating the reality around us through his word. In a way, he trusts us with his word. In a way, he loves us beyond our understanding to create through us the spoken word. What a privilege. From today onwards, speak the rhema God gives you. Move between hope to faith. What? Have you received this year? Speak what God has given to you. Even if you don't see it or feel it. See, the only problem between spirit, soul, and body is the body has all these five senses. The problem is the soul also got those same five senses. And then the spirit also got the same five senses. I spoke about it once when I talked about what the spirit man is like. And so you have five senses in the spirit, you have five senses in the soul, you have five senses in the physical body. Which will you trust? Which will you choose? Choose the Spirit. Because God is Spirit. And those who want to feel and touch God must touch the spiritual realm. That's why those who live only in the physical realm, when they die, they say, oh, oh it's darkness, there's nothing out there. Because the spiritual eyes are dead. They are spiritual senses dead. We need our spiritual eyes to be open, our spiritual senses to be open, to see the spiritual realm. And sometimes, the presence of God stir only in our spirit. All the people around us might not feel it or see it. It's interesting that you can be in a church meeting, gather together with thousands of people, and you're there and you experience the presence of God. Another person right next to you say, I don't feel anything. Because God is spirit and manifests himself in the spirit. He says, the Lord Jesus is with your spirit. And those who are not spiritual sense nothing. They see nothing, they hear nothing. Because only those who have an ear hear what the spirit of God says. Now you know why it's so important to hear what the spirit of God says. Because what God says must be what we say. Then the synchrony to God recreating our realities. 
in my reality, the kingdom of God exists. In my reality, the kingdom of God reigns. In my reality, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess to Jesus. In my reality, Satan is defeated. In my reality, darkness is, is uh, bound only to certain sections. God allowed. In my reality, the church is overcoming. In my reality, I've been blessed by God, finally, spirit, soul, and body. Because God says it. We choose in our soul the spiritual realities. Now, we do not deny the physical. There's a difference between Christian science and true Christianity. Christian science, which is a cult, deny that the physical exists. They deny it exists. They don't acknowledge that it is a reality of its own. Through Christianity, acknowledge the, the physical exists. But we acknowledge the spiritual exists. And then, seeing two realities, we keep saying, the physical reality will pass away. It's temporary. Understand the word temporary reality. It's a temporary reality that you are not blessed, that you're not the head and not the tail. But it will be a permanent reality if you believe the word of God. We are the head and not the tail. We are blessed. Goodness and mercy flow upon us day and night. The devil is defeated under our feet. Satan and all his cohorts of darkness are underneath our feet. We have authority over them in our reality. That is how faith functions. We acknowledge two realities and that one is passing away at 2 Corinthians 14. The other is eternal, permanent and taking over the temporary reality. In the cult of Christian science, they deny the physical exists. That is wrong. The doctrines of God must be correct, pure, exact. There are certain things that Christians believe they are not thought out or taught properly. Like we have mentioned when we talk about the atonement of Jesus, that Jesus did not have to have his spirit and so disease, weaken and dead. Jesus never died spiritually. When Jesus came out from the cross, it was a champion spirit absorbing and conquering all darkness and cry of victory as he came out of the body to take control of Hades and death. So it was a wrong theology to teach that Jesus died spiritually. When he died, his spirit came out alive and preached to the other spirits that were imprisoned in Hades. <laughs> a dead spirit cannot be preaching or taking authority over hell and death. So the theology was not accurate enough. It missed <coughs> because <coughs> it was inaccurate because they didn't think properly or meditate on the scriptures. <coughs> Our theology and understanding <coughs> but realities <coughs> must be in line with the Bible. When Mark 11 mentioned when you pray, believe that you have received, and you shall have them. He acknowledged two realities. One, that you shall have them. That's the natural changing. The other, you have received. Which is the spiritual reality that you actually have received. <clears throat> so we must understand that God does manifest His presence in the spiritual. 24 hours is always there for you to access. Then you can pray in the spirit. When you pray in tongues, you can access that reality. So God manifests in the spiritual first. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15 acknowledges that. They must manifest in the spiritual. Then in the natural. Paul says, we see the invisible. How do you think Paul do all that he does? He sees in the spiritual. Now, when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, he felt this love of God flowing through him. And what he felt was the energy of God's presence in the spirit flowing through him as he wrote the words of God to the Corinthians. He says he's compelled by this love. The tears flowing down his eyes with the love of God pumping through his spirit and his power. He wrote what we now call 
the Bible. Baby acknowledged in his Psalms that God spoke by his tongue. He knew that there was something bigger flowing through him when he was writing the Psalms. And in the book of Acts, we see that sometimes God stirred Paul in the Spirit. We see how in Acts, in uh, <clears throat> the book of Acts, uh, chapter 18, in verse 5, when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. What do you mean? Compelled by the Spirit. Suneco, oppressed, or filled, and stirred in the Spirit. So that's where the presence of God can manifest just in the Spirit. And the people around us might not know it unless they are also spiritual. God can be manifesting in our spirit. We can feel in our spirit. We can sense in our spirit the stirring of the Holy Spirit. When each one of you sing or speak or share, I can see your spirit. I can see whether your spirit is filled and stirred. And every word that came out from you, every expression came out from you, we could take it and analyze it, how much spirit, how much soul, and how much physical you're speaking from. We must be like Jesus. When John 6, 63, every word he spoke was spiritually powerful. Every word he spoke came from his spirit. He says, my words are spirit and they are life. God is in the process of recreating this physical reality around us. We must become the mouthpiece of God. That God speak his word and create this universe of ours. We are the mouthpiece of God. Through us, God is recreating this universe. And Paul was compelled, stirred, in some translation, in the spirit. And then he opened his mouth and spoke. And in verse 9, the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. For I am with you and no one will attack you to hurt you. For many people in this city, Paul continued a year and six months in Corinth, teaching the word of God. Now, if you were next to Paul in verse 9, you would have seen nothing in the natural except for what Paul is reacting to. Now, in verse 9, actually, it is since Paul saw a vision, his, his soul was involved. That would be Jesus manifesting in the spirit and in his soul. So God, number one, can manifest just purely in the spirit. When Jesus says in Matthew 28, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. There is Jesus saying, he will always be present with us spiritually. People cannot see Jesus. They cannot feel Jesus. Except you know that Jesus is with you. You know that Jesus is manifest in your spirit. And here's another occasion where in the book of Acts chapter 10, the presence of God was manifest in Peter's spirit and soul. Peter had a trance and was in a vision. In verse 10, chapter 10 of Acts. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. So there was a natural feeling. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. In a trance, your physical senses are suspended. And you see and feel in the spiritual and in your soul. And saw heaven open and an object like a great sheep <coughs> bound at the four corners, descending to him and led down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him saying, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. So he saw a vision. His spirit was involved. His soul was involved. So God was actually manifesting to him in two dimensions, spirit and soul. If you were next to Peter and you look in his eyes or wave your hand in front of him, he cannot see you because his natural senses were suspended. In the natural, you cannot hear the voice that he heard. 
but he heard it in the spirit and in his soul. And that vision occurred three times. God can manifest in the spirit alone, or where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is here. He is right now here watching us. In fact, all our spirits right now are in a place in heaven. You might not believe it, but right now we're all gathered in a particular place and room in heaven. And I'm speaking from that place, even though in the natural, I'm here on earth speaking. But you're right up there hearing me teach you. And there are many times I conducted classes out in the spirit. Some of you will come and join me sometimes and we were there speaking about spiritual things. Sometimes in your prayers, we were together up there. And we were indeed up there in the spirit. We were indeed gathered together. How wonderful is that? See, when we become more spiritual, we begin to appreciate spiritual things and spiritual realities. Sometimes some of you have come with me in the spirit to certain places and I've shown you certain things. We have a lot of communion or spiritual relationships and fellowship in the heavens. Where two or three gathered together in my name, Jesus' presence is with us. How great and wonderful are the spiritual realities. And the spiritual experiences that we classify as communion of the Spirit, the partnership of the Spirit. And Paul speaks about that. And he speaks even about spiritual fragrances. Those are spiritual realities that we experience of God. Whatever you do, whatever you say, will come from your spirit man. If your spirit man is weak, weakness comes out. If your spirit man is partially clouded by the physical, it comes out. I've spoken to some of you, and sometimes I say, look, this thing always comes up, whatever you do, this sadness, deal with it, get over it, get it out of your spirit. Or uh, doubts, and say, this thing keep coming up wherever you speak. Get rid of it. Make your spirit stronger. Because if you doubt, it affects your spirit. If you have faith, it strengthens your spirit. <clears throat> We have to become like Jesus. With 24 hours a day, the spirit that we speak, the spirit that we function in, and the words that come forth from us are like Jesus' words, full of spirit and full of life, full of life. God is recreating our realities and the reality that we live in through the words that he speaks. Through us, oh, oh, through his rhema that is given to us. Like Noah, 120 years he spoke about rain. <clears throat> no one has seen rain, but he spoke about it. And in Hebrews 11, he speaks about how oh, men and women of faith have spoken about things that are not even a reality yet. They brought forth to faith the recreation of the new reality of the kingdom of God. He never read it in Genesis. But Abraham spoke about the city of God that he saw. He spoke about the reality that was only in his spirit before even the kingdom of God was spoken of by our Lord Jesus. Our words will be judged. Because our words create a new reality. When I was transported in 2012, I was told that it was done through, uh, it's like a reality, it's like a videotape. Uh, one section was taken and reality is taken and it's joined to another reality. And so I moved from one dimension physically into a different spot physically. And what was in between just like ceased to exist because the two different realities, which is our physical reality, were joined. So I never saw what was in between. Never experienced it. Although I've driven the area many times up and down. But on that very day, that reality disappeared because I moved from one reality joined to a different reality. It says that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that that which is visible is not made from the visible, but made from the invisible. Hebrews 11 was 3. Frame. We are framing our next reality by the words that we speak. In this reality that I see, we are in the kingdom of God. We have received the kingdom of God decreed by the ancient of days that we possess the kingdom. And in this reality, we have power of wealth on this earth. In this reality, we have 
power over all sickness and all disease, even creative power to create new organs, tissues, or limbs that people have lost. In this reality, we work hand-to-hand -hand in perfect harmony with the angels. In this reality, we are the glorious church filled with the fullness of God. And it is God who moves in the spiritual reality and creates it. And God's presence can be manifest just in the spirit, building the dimension of the spirit. And God's reality can also be in our spirit and in our soul. When Peter, in Acts 10, saw these animals to him, because his soul was involved, they were real. They were right there. And when God said kill them, he could physically like, touch them in his soul. It was real to him. But you're next to him, you would not even see a single animal. Because it was just in the spiritual and in the soul, only in Peter's reality. And sometimes God has manifest visions that way. In the book, I believe in visions, when, when in the chapter E, Hegim speaks about how after Jesus anointed him with anointing in his hands, where he could feel uh, it sense to the anointing given to him, whether something is uh, just physical or there are demons involved. And there was a man who could not bend his back. And he sensed it was a demon involved. And then after he, he ministered the healing, the man was walking away and uh, he had spoken to the man and said, see if you can bend. And the man couldn't. And as the man was walking away, Jesus appeared to him again. That was in the spirit and in his soul because his soul was also talking. And Jesus says, I told you that if you cast them out in my name, they will go. And Jesus says to him, and people heard the conversation from Hagin's side because he was speaking to the vision of Jesus he saw. And he says, I did, but it didn't happen. Then Jesus came nearer and said, I told you, if you command, it will happen. And Jesus said, Meekly now. And I was like, yeah, I did, but it happened. And then finally, Jesus put a finger between his eyes and said, I told you that when you command, it will take place. And shoo, Jesus disappeared. He says, for the first time, he saw what Jesus looked like when he's angry. His eyes were like fire. Jesus is always angry at doubts and unbelief. And then suddenly he realized what he should do. He commanded that man to come back. And that man was walking to his seat but halfway and he hear this conversation that Hagin was having with Jesus whom he could see but nobody else could see. And everybody was listening to that conversation from Hagin's side. And as the man came back, he told the man. He did the same thing again, released anointing and said, and, and the man was healed. The problem was a word. If. Doubt. Remember I told you that when Peter was walking on water, all that took place was in his mind doubts and he started sinking doubts are a curse to the walk of faith doubts are what cause people to lose that piece of the land of Cain and spiritually that they're supposed to possess Jesus said in Mark 11 if you do not doubt in your heart doubts are more dangerous when they're in your heart than when they're in your head because when they're in your head, it's like the man in Mark chapter 9 who says, help my unbelief. They can be helped. But doubts in your heart come from your own consciousness, existence, and free will. After all, we are creatures who live in spirit, soul, and body. You can see in the spirit, you can see in your soul, you can see in your body. It's up to you to choose which one is your true reality. I choose the rhema of God. The rhema of God says, I have power and authority over all sickness and disease. The rhema of God says, I have the power of wealth. And in a sense, Isaiah 60 is real for me, that in this planet Earth, in my reality, I'm the richest. We are the richest. Not somebody else. We choose our realities. And you either choose in the spirit, or you choose in the natural. The man and people who fail in the Bible are those who choose sometimes spirit and then they choose the natural. You know why King Saul failed? Because he keeps seeing the natural and he was uh, an inferior person <clears throat> who allowed his inferiority to bite him. 
when God anointed David, Uko accepted that David was God's choice. Instead, he feared for his own position. He became jealous of David and he told his son, son Jonathan, don't you know he would keep your position if he accepted David? I thought David was by that time his son-in-law. There would be a transition spiritually into God's perfect plan. Jonathan stepped aside, became the helper of David. David became king. <clears throat> when everything would have been beautiful. But instead, Saul chose to kill David to get rid of someone he see to be uh, and you take a possible you take a usurper of his kingdom. He should just pass the kingdom to David. And all would have been well. But he was too inferior, too jealous, too physically protective of his own position. He forgot. His own position was a gift of God. And it's God who gives, not humans, not he himself. And don't ever forget that. Whatever you have from God, came from God. You do not need to protect what God gives you. Because if God gives you, no man can take it from you. And if no man can take it from you, it means that no devil or Satan himself can take it from you. What is yours will always be yours. Which is why I believe the billions of dollars that we will work with and function with is ours. We don't have to strive. We don't have to try. We just have to rest. What is ours? Every dollar and cent that we have to function in will always come into our hands, into our accounts, our storehouses, our banks. And no devil can steal a single cent because if God says it, it is done. Even if he has to take the silver or gold coin out of the mouth of the fish and place it in our hand, it will be done. When God spoke to Joseph in the Bible and says that he will be a ruler, nothing can prevent it from happening. And he was indeed the master of the world. He had the wealth of the world in his hand. The ancient of days has determined that the saints will possess the kingdom. <clears throat> Indeed, we will possess <clears throat> the kingdom of God. It is already spiritually given to us. September 18, 2023, we receive it in the spirit. Now we sit and wait and command it to happen in the physical. The it, will, it shall be done part is God and his angels making it. We don't have to strive to make the natural part happen. We only have to believe and speak and agree with God that it is so and it will be so. We have the backing of all the angels, our angels, spirit beings in heaven to make sure it comes to pass according to the word of God given to us. So God can manifest in the spirit God can manifest in the spirit and in the soul, as we saw in Acts chapter 10. And each time Paul had a vision that's mentioned, it was usually in the spirit and in the soul. Then there are times when God manifests in the spirit, soul, and body. And that manifestation can be just a little bit or can be a lot. In the appearance of Jesus to Paul, in Acts chapter 9, some of the people who were with him felt something, but it was not a hundred percent manifested in the physical. He was only partial. So you have his testimony in Acts chapter 9 that when Jesus spoke to him and said, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting, the people around him heard something, heard a sound, but they saw no one. So it was manifested in the spirit, in the soul, but the soul was so powerful that it affected a little bit of the natural, especially those around. But nobody else heard the voice of Jesus the way Paul had. When Paul got up, he could not see physically. The effect of the spiritual light affected him. And Paul actually had a vision while he was in Damascus. And when God called Ananias, which could be also a vision of spirit and soul, but not in the natural, Ananias said, Here I am, Lord, in chapter 10, uh, chapter 10, uh, chapter 9, verse 10. 
And the Lord told him, Arise, go to the street called Straight, inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in, putting his hand on him, so that he might receive his sight. So Paul also, while waiting in Damascus for three days, three nights, he also had a vision. Now, his vision, his physical eyes were blind, blinded at the time, temporarily. So Paul also only saw in the spirit, and so, and he saw many Ananias laying hands on him. So these are the presence of God manifest in the spirit and in the soul. Physically, there was no manifestation. But sometimes the manifestation in the spirit so can be so strong that there's a side effect on those around you. They also cannot see, but they felt something. In the book of Daniel, Daniel spoke about the manifestations of God in his life. Uh, manifestation of God's presence. And then Daniel <laughs> spoke about hmm, these occurrences that took place. He recorded some of them. And <clears throat> He says uh, of one of his visions here in the book of Daniel. It says here of his visions in uh, Daniel. And we're going to look from this place when he saw our angels of God. Most of the time, he was probably in his room praying and he has this vision. Now, most visions are God's manifestation in the spirit and in the soul. Even when you have a dream from God, your body just uh, knock out, you would have a presence of God in your spirit and in your soul. <coughs> Remember Joseph, <coughs> the betrothed or the husband of Mary, that when they were in danger, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. So the dream was a directional dream. The angel told him to go to Egypt. Later, the angel told him from Egypt to go back. A dream is a manifestation of God's presence in the spirit and in the soul. So God can manifest in the spirit, God can manifest in the spirit and in your soul. And your body is not even involved sometimes in that manifestation. Daniel speaks about uh, this vision that he had in chapter 10. He says in verse 4, he was by the river Tigris, and he must have been meditating or manifesting. And as he, as he was in prayer, he lifted up his eyes, and he saw this angel, Gabriel, cloth in lining, linen, whose waist was girded with gold or ufas. His body was like barrel, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. And Daniel saw the vision, then there were his helpers and servants around him. They did not see the vision. But a great terror fell upon them, so that they fled and hide. And Daniel said, I was left alone in this growing vision. Physically, no strength remained in him. His vigor was turned to frailty, like he was basically fell under power. So this vision was spiritual and soul. It has a slight effect in the natural, but not a full effect. So God can manifest in the spirit and in the soul. When Abraham had a vision of God in Genesis 15, he felt a great terror in his vision and prophecy about 400 years down the road. It was a manifestation of God to him in the spirit and in the soul. It can be quite delightful for the soul when the soul experiences the presence of God in visions, in dreams, in manifestation. The body can have a slight effect of falling under power or in a deep sleep or in some sort of a uh, trance-like thing where the body shut down. Mm -hmm. It's basically a manifestation of God in the spirit and in the soul. So we could be all praying together or worshipping on a Friday five hours and then some of you might begin to have God manifest His presence in your spirit or in the spirit and soul. When John saw Jesus in Revelations, it was a manifestation of God in the spirit and in the soul. His body had a side effect. He fell under the power. <laughs> and he was caught up. Now, when you're, when you're caught out with an OBE, out of body experience, it is usually a manifestation of God in the spirit and soul. Because the body is like uh, cut off. It was like slain. It's like tensor, the bodily senses. And all your experiences are in your spirit and in your soul. That's usually quite a powerful manifestation too. John was caught out of his body into the spiritual dimension. Paul speaks about a man 
who went to third heaven, he said he doesn't know whether it's in the body or just in the spirit because it was such that he did not know and could not feel the physical body. In the manifestation of God in the spirit and soul, the body can be just like under the power or be in the trance or all his senses cut off and all you feel and see is in the spirit and in the soul. So God can manifest just in the spirit or he can manifest in the spirit and in the soul, sometimes with a side effect on the body. When Jesus prayed and spoke and a voice came from heaven, the Bible says, some say it thundered. Some say an angel spoke to him because they heard like certain sound. Mm -mm. <laughs> and it was not a physical sound. So it was God manifesting in the spirit and so God actually says he has glorified his name and will glorify it again. But some say he thundered. Some say angels spoke to him. Others thought they heard a voice. So in the natural, it was not clear enough. That is usually a manifestation of God in the spirit and so, so powerful is a slight side effect on the natural but not fully physical. When Elijah went to Mount Horeb, and there was a physical manifestation of the side effect of God's presence. That is the presence of God in the physical from the spiritual. And the Bible tells us that when he's on the mountain, a great wind poured through the mountain and the rocks in pieces, and an earthquake and a fire. But no matter, and this is where we learn, no matter what takes place in the physical, since God always manifests, when God manifests in the physical, it's always spiritual first, then soul, and then body. You always focus on the spiritual first. Don't get caught, caught up in the side effects. You know some people, they get so caught up in the slaying under power that they try to physically produce it or they look for it. That person got rebuked by John G. Lake when he was training a group of students and, and they prayed for healing, one of the students got caught up with people falling under power. And then John G. Lake actually rebuked him. He says, is anyone healed? There were none. They just found the power. So he says, when you actually want healing, you should see healing. That's more powerful than just falling under power and not get healed. So a lot of people today are looking for phenomena which is not the important one. Uh, what does gold dust do? What does shaking do? What does trembling do? All these are side effects. Don't make the side effects the main thing. If you pray for healing, it's not falling in the power that's important. A thousand people can fall in the power, but no one healed. What's that for? We pray for healing. We want a real powerful healing that can be seen under the microscope or by examination by doctors. Understand. Do not accept second great answers. You pray for healing, you want a powerful healing. Whether people fall in the power or not is not the important thing. Whether people shake and tremble or scream is not the important thing. Those are side effects. So Elijah understood all the side effects in the physical and he seek the spiritual. That was why he was up that mountain. And he heard God spoke to him, teach him, taught him, and tell him what the next step to do was. God actually wanted to heal Elijah's loneliness, give him a disciple called Elisha to accompany him the rest of his life. That was the answer. When the people of God in Exodus 19 met God, God was manifest in the physical. But of course, there was a powerful spiritual manifestation which Moses understood. And there must be a dimension in the soul, which is why even his physical body don't need nutrition. But there was a powerful physical manifestation. The whole mountain wake and they saw the cloud. Now, when people see a cloud, like in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, the cloud was a physical manifestation of God's presence. So God can be present in the spiritual, the soul, and the body. When he's present in the physical body, there is a side effect, either healing, uh, creation, Clouds, thunders, lightning, fire. Some people among the 120 must have saw fire manifested in Acts chapter 2 on the heads. Must be uh, they themselves see each other. Because the physical people outside didn't see any fire. They didn't see the wind. They only see these strange people speaking in tongues. So God was manifested in the spiritual, in the soul, 
with some effects in the natural world that some of them could discern and see. But the actual physical people out there, they only hear this commotion and then these people speaking in tongues. You look very carefully at the manifestation in Acts chapter 2. It says here that there was tongues of fire, there was a wind. And in verse 6, when this sound occurred, so the people heard a sound of the wind. So there was a manifestation in the spirit, in the soul, and in the physical. Sometimes you see a sound, sometimes you hear, you see clouds, sometimes you see fire. God can manifest in the spirit, soul, and body. And in the physical, of course, God can manifest through powerful healings, creative forces working. In Jesus' time, one time together, and the Bible says, and the presence of God was present to heal. So a miracle was forthcoming, and the paralyzed man was healed. God can manifest in the spiritual, in the soul, in the body. If you have a physical uh, need of healing, when God manifests, you will instantly be healed. Sometimes even without prayer, but just being in the presence of God, it manifests. When the rod of Aaron was kept in God's presence, it manifested in the physical. So the dead rod became a life branch of a tree. Every cell was resurrected. And the rod grew leaves, flowers, and fruit overnight. The presence of God can manifest in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. And let us understand, whenever God manifests in the physical, the spiritual and soul must also be activated and manifested. When God manifests in the soul, the spiritual 100% must be also stirred and manifested. And then God can, of course, manifest just in the spirit. Let us understand these three dimensions of God's manifestation in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. We do not control God's manifestation. We flow with it. It is God's choice, God's uh, power to choose how, when He manifests. Sometimes Jesus knew and He took His disciples up in the transfiguration and God manifests in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. His clothes change. That was a manifestation of God's presence, spirit, soul, and body. The good news is that God sees our physical body as His temple. And like the presence of God that filled Moses' tabernacle, such that Moses himself in Exodus 40 could not get in, despite his knowledge and experience of God's presence. He could not enter the tabernacle for a short time when God was manifested as a cloud. And in the temple of Solomon, for a moment, God filled the whole temple with His presence. The priest, the worshiper could not enter him. It's to take a cloud. There was a story spoken about in the charismatic movement when one time there was a prayer meeting and spoken by Jerry Savell. And one of the rooms seemed to be full of some sort of cloud. And somebody on the outside tried to get in. And he could not get in. And then he ran and tried to get past the cloud. He bounced and fell. <laughs> it's got manifested as a cloud. It's interesting that God's presence which is always in Jesus' now New Testament, 24 hours in our spirit. Our spirit is the holy of holies. And any time, day or night, that you want to experience the presence of God, it's yours. Get into the consciousness of your spirit. And from time to time, not of your choice, but of God's choice, He can manifest Himself in your spirit and in your soul. When He manifests in your soul, you probably are in some sort of visions or trance or some sort of spiritual experience that catches your whole soul or even our body or within the body experience. And then when he manifests in the natural, there will always be the side effect of healing and creation. Sometimes without thinking, you are healed. Sometimes without even asking, you are healed. Sometimes even without consciousness, the natural is perfected. Hallelujah. God is about to manifest in the physical so that all the promises of God are fulfilled. And it becomes a reality in our spirit, soul, and body. And the world could see the effect of that. The world can feel the side effects of God changing the reality around us. We have received the kingdom of God. And this kingdom of God is spirit, soul, and body, according to Daniel 2.44. is greater than all the four empires before it. 
the glory of God is given to us. It's already in us. Colossians chapter 1 says that the glory of Christ is in us. The hope of glory. As we enjoy this last day of the year and enter into the new year, remember what God has spoken of His Rema in your life. Remember what God has given to you in the Spirit and speak for with faith what God has given to you. When you walk in faith, you please God. Romans 14 says, without faith, it is sin. You know, Romans and Hebrews 11 tells us, without faith, it is not possible to please God. Because God himself is a God of faith. He spoke and then creation came forth. God sees and then creation comes forth. God visualizes and it comes to pass. God speaks and it comes to pass. And we might all think that it was instantaneous. Yes, as far as God is concerned. But as things are being created, it might have been over eons of countless time because time was not measured yet. And today God is recreating our reality. We must rise to be the overcomers of God who hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And what the Spirit says, we say, we agree with God in the Spirit. And as our spirits are born again of the same Spirit of God and we speak the words of God, it recreates our reality. This reality that you see around you, that you read in the news, will change. It's temporary. Understand the word temporary. It's changing. It's not permanent. The true reality is the kingdom of God. It's established on this earth. And everything that we feel and see around us will change, will be broken down and become the reality of the kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and God's will will be done. And every knee will bow, every tongue confess. This reality will bow and be subject to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then all things after it bow to Jesus will be handed to the Father. We are in it right now, the change of realities. Because everything, as we prophesy, is subject and under Jesus' feet. And the Bible admits that we don't see all things yet under the feet of Jesus. See, the Bible recognizes the two realities. The physical that is temporary and the spiritual that is permanent. So let's live in the understanding of the two realities. Receive the fullness of God. The kingdom of God is manifest. And for us, the reality is Jesus is Lord. And this reality on the earth, in every country, in all the news you read, when you read that, remember, is subject to Jesus. It will bow to Jesus. Every thought, every reality around us will bow to the name of Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. And all the angels right now are working to make that true reality the reality in this universe. Everything will be subject to the white throne judgment. Everything will be judged. Every word, every thought, every action, every intent of the heart. And Jesus will be all that God made him to be. Satan will be bound. And all the forces of darkness will be thrown into the lake of fire. It's a reality. Satan finally also will be thrown into the lake of fire. That is a reality we choose right now. Look at the mountains around you. Be moved, be removed, and be replaced by the kingdom of God. It is time, the ancient of this says, for the saints to possess the kingdom of God. Choose your reality. And it will be so. We thank you, Father God, for your words. This universe that we see around you, this physical reality that we see around you, was originally made by your words. It became disobedient. It became disruptive. It became anti agnostic against you because of rebellion from Satan. But this reality that we see you that is rebellious, that is stubborn, that is anti-God and anti-Jesus, 
this reality will be removed and be replaced with the kingdom of God. Something that you have spoken and asked the church to pray for. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And nothing that is against your will can exist in this reality that we believe in, that we receive. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We give you all worship and praise as we wait on you to see the manifestation of all the wealth of the world coming into our hands of Isaiah 16, of 1 Corinthians 15, of Daniel 2.44. Let it be unto us according to your word. Let the year 2024 be filled with the realities of the authority of Jesus reigning over everything in our life. As we ourselves bow to the Lordship of Jesus, to He who was and is and is to come, to God Almighty, who through Jesus has finally brought the universe that was in rebellion against Him, especially the second and third heaven, that all in the spirit, soul, and body, all that is in heaven, all that is on earth, all that is underneath the earth, be subject to Jesus. Let all the authority in Jesus reign in all seven heavens. Let Jesus be Lord in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Let every mountain and valley and sea and rock hear the voice of Jesus and bow to the authority of Yahweh God, Jesus Christ. Let the kingdom of God rule and reign on this planet in all the 200 over countries be melted under the empire of the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. This is our reality. Father God, we proclaim it. Seal it. As you seal the dream of Joseph in Genesis, such that he became the ruler over the earth, so seal your grace in our life that we become the ruler on this earth through our Lord Jesus. Let all heaven and earth and under the earth be subject to the kingdom of God. We praise you and bless you, Father. We are yours and we are one with you. And we enter the fullness of your glory that Jesus prayed for us. We agree with his prayer. We all our spirits, souls, and bodies. We yield to the presence of the living God that fill us as your third temple. Let your presence be manifested in our spirit, soul, and body. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Praise, Praise God. I pass the time to Pauline uh, for your questions and answers. Thank you, Pastor. So uh, if you've got questions, you can now post in the chat. You can also unmute yourself to ask the question. There are some things in the Bible that are so uh, fixed. In Daniel chapter 244, it says, In the days of the Tentos, the rock, which I've been Jesus in the kingdom of God, hit the Tentos. The Tentos are equal to the ten horns in Daniel 7. And they are the ten countries in Europe that exist today. In the days of their existence, the kingdom of God is established. These 10 countries only exist after the Second World War in 1948. So that is a reality, a prophecy so real, so powerful, so exact. So we do know that in 2027 to 2029, three of those countries, as predicted in Daniel 7, are removed by the little horn. When the angels spoke to us in this end time, the angels told us what the three, the three horns were they were knocked down by the little horn. The little horn is Russia. The three countries that were knocked down were Germany, France, and UK. When they went to war against Russia, they were at first seem to win and then lose in 2029. There will be seven meteorite pieces that fall in Russia, and that will be the excuse for war to attack. First, they will win all the way to Moscow and then they will be lose by a counter-attack on two, two fronts. God showed us all these things. They are determined. They are fixed. They will occur. We live in these times. And these are the times for the manifestation of the kingdom of God. We are privileged to be in these days. Okay, there's a question privately about 
what did they fast? Uh, that's a question about someone who was dedicated wrongly to the wrong gods. Mm. Not to worry about that. We pray for you and no matter what you were dedicated to, like the kings in the book of Kings and Chronicles, all those things under the blood of Jesus are removed. Claim 2 Corinthians 5.17 All things have passed away. All things have become new. And continue to walk in them. Uh, question says, how past that? <laughs> Concerning Daniel 2.44 about the kingdom of God, what are the spiritual and physical, uh, physical influences does the kingdom of God have in the year 2024? The spiritual influences are the rise and fall of many men and women and authorities and powers. God is raising his people because God's kingdom consists of people, human beings. And God is not interested in organizations. Organizations are the tools that we humans use. God is interested in people. When he won an exodus, he raised a Moses. When he won a father of faith, he raised an Abraham. When God wants to do things on this New, new Testament time, he raised a human being. We are the human beings God has raised. God raised people because one person can influence the whole planet. We are his people. And in 2024, God continued to raise and place his human vessels in positions of power. And God will bring down all those that should not live beyond 2024. They will be crushed, defeated, and blown away like dust. So that those whom he chooses will rule and reign in the name of Jesus and manifest his lordship, empire, and kingdom. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord while we wait for other questions. Uh, Colin, any comments or contributions? God bless you. So I think a question uh, followed up by Justice, is it? So, mm. Yeah, I did mention that spiritually and physically, the thing that we will see in the year 2024 is the changing of the guard. There will be people who will be brought down quite suddenly. There will be people who are uh, risen up also suddenly. And we all find our place in the rise and fall of kings of authority. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, when a man or woman of God, of God's destiny and plan, is risen up exactly according to the timing of God, the whole nation, the whole group of people under the authority will also be risen. So as David, who was rejected and rejected and rejected for all the years under King Saul, when the first tribe rise under him, there was a battle of authorities between Israel and Judah. And it says David grew stronger and stronger and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. And finally, David conquered. And all came under his authority. The moment they came under authority, all those under his domain and influence were risen up. Israel became the richest and most powerful country under David. And the authorities expand north, south, east, and west. The same way, when God in 2024 raised men and women of his under their under him in the kingdom of God, many people under their influence will also be blessed and risen north, south, east, and west in blessings. Amen. Amen. Already in the year 2023, some of you have felt your chains broken. Three things took place in 2023. Your chains were broken. Number two, your eyes were open. Number three, your spirit receive an impartation of strength. <clears throat> so, between now and midnight, today in your area of the new year or the next day for some of you over on the other side of the world, write down the rhema you receive during 2023. 
hold fast to it. Write down the visions of God's impartation to you in the year 2023. Accept them. Receive them. Speak of them. And it will come to pass in the year 2024. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, uh, as we enter into 2024, uh, we have those things that the Lord spoke to us in 2023 which we can possess. Uh, there's mm. all those that he spoke to us in 2021, 2020, or mm. many, many years past. Uh, mm. And also mm. some of it has partial fulfillment and there is another level of fullness that is coming forth. So yes. uh, we go from glory to glory and there is, uh, as we enter into 2024, a greater level of even those things that we have received to receive something that is bigger than we have uh, not received yet. Amen. In 2023, our spirits have been strengthened and expanded. In 2023, you will notice one thing. Your chains were broken. There were some things that you could not conquer, that you struggled with, that you wrestled with. They seemed to be gone. You seemed to have a victory over them. You seemed to have power and authority that you never knew you had. Your chains were broken. In 2023, your eyes were open. You can see things clearer that you could not see before. There were some things that were clarity of understanding. There's some things that were clarity of visions. Your eyes were open. So when your eyes are open, Ephesians 1 takes place. You will know the hope of your calling, the riches of your inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of the power of resurrection that was in Jesus. And all things will be subject under your feet. 2024. Praise the Lord. Any final words, uh, Colleen, before um, we close in prayer and let each one spend a meditative time uh, waiting on the Lord and understanding His Rima He gave us in 2023. So we launch into the new year after midnight. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Indeed, uh, it's the right time that we are in and uh, the time of the Lord um, is also uh, very sure. So as the Lord has shown in the dream uh, of the watch that is 30 years old, uh, and it is <laughs> we saying it is it is time. The time is ripe. The time is right and uh, he has prepared um, us for this time to receive his kingdom. Yeah. Mm. Praise the Lord. Receive all that God has spoken of you in this year. <laughs> Remember that when God anoints you, like he anointed David 15 years before he was a king of Judah and um, 15 plus 7.5 years before he was a true king of Israel, that his anointing that he has given to you will always work. When the lion and the bear came to David, it was after his anointing. It was allowed by God. And David needed the experience of defeating the lion and the bear in order to defeat Goliath. And all that you have gone through, all that you have experienced, was a part of the training of God. Without his training of 13 years, Joseph would not have made a good ruler. But because of his training, through slavery and through imprisonment in Jesse, he became a good ruler. He understood injustice. He understood reduction to nothing. He became a better ruler. And Jesus himself was allowed to be tested through suffering so that he can demonstrate the grace that he had. Grace comes through deprivation and suffering. 
when a person says we have grace, it's because we have this empathy and kindness to people who suffer, to people who are in need, because we understand what it is like. And in the same way, as you have overcome your lions and your bears, they got allowed to come upon you. You're ready to face your Goliath. And with the fall of Goliath in your life, you will experience fame like David experienced. But never ever let fame get into your head. Curse on what God asks you to be and to do. Promotions will be coming forth in the year 2024. A rising will come upon our life. Goliath will fall before you, but never allow pride, power, authority to make you into a proud person. Remain humble, remain gracious, remain like Jesus, who has all authority and power and never, ever abuse them. Praise God. Let's give God thanks and praise. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your exaltation and exaltation in our lives. And we thank you that through your word, you have transformed us. Through your spirit, you have empowered us. With your angels, we serve you together. Let them be blessed and strengthened and rewarded as we are. We thank you, Father, that it is time for your intervention of planet Earth. For this world to know there is a God who sees everything we want. There's a God who hears the cry of those who are suffering. There's a God who hears the call of those who cry for righteousness sake. We thank you. There's a fullness of time for Isaiah 60. And the fullness of time has come. Here we are. Having done all, we stand. We are still breathing. We are still alive, we are still preaching, we are still teaching, we are still standing on the promises of God. Your word is life in us. Your word has been refined into our existence and DNA. We are your word. Your word and us has become one. Your calling into our lives have become our consciousness and existence. We are yours, Father. We live, we breathe, we eat, we feed on the Word of God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And every day of our existence on earth, we live, we breathe, we eat, we partake of your word. That this word that you spoke will change the reality of this fallen world into the reality of the glorious kingdom of God, of which we exist in, of which we live for, of which we seek to establish. Let it be unto us according to your word. As we move into 2024, establish your kingdom. Fill us with a very powerful and glorious presence of yours, Father. Let the face of your light, the light of your face shine upon us in a greater way that has never shown before on any peoples of the earth. We are your covenant people. Let your light be so great on us, such that the enemy trembles and flee before us, for your glory is upon us. 
indeed, the fullness of your glory is upon us. We are your bride. We are your church. Without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. We are yours. And all the days of our life from now to your translation and rapture, we will live it 24 hours for Jesus. We will establish the 10,000 churches that you have called us to. We will establish 24-hour praise and worship and strengthen them so strong until the praise and worship of all these centers cover the earth with your glory. We seek only your glory. We seek only Jesus. We seek only your perfect will. Let your kingdom come and be established in these nations, on this planet. Let your kingdom fill this earth greater than the kingdoms of Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, or the Roman Empire. As your word declares, let it be unto us according to your word. Let the decree of the ancient of days be established upon every king, prime minister, and president on this earth. That it is time for your saints to possess your kingdom. Let the earth see the glory that you have filled us with. And let all authority and power be under our feet as it is under Jesus' feet. Fulfill your word from the beginning of time, the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. Your word has prevailed. And so it is prevailing in our lives today. Thank you, Father. We worship and glorify you. And like Mary spoke, let it be unto us according to your word. We believe, we thank you, we worship you. And let worship rise to you from all of our hearts and mind and mouth from now to the time we enter into the year 2024. Bless you, Father. We worship you. And we join together with the voice of the 24 elders and the four living creatures. Holy, 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 the earth is full of your glory. Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Worthy is the Lamb to receive riches and power and glory and might and authority and riches and worthiness. Oh, receive all the blessings of the seven heavens. We thank you, Father. Jesus is Lord. And we bow before you on this earth, your footstool. We worship you. We give you glory, praise, and worship, and honor. Thank you, Father, for this time that we have together in this place, united online together, as we continue from glory to glory, grace to grace. Bless each one of these who have stood steadfast, who has stood together in this move. Anoint them, appoint them, choose them as you have called them. Let them be among the chosen whom you have raised in this end time. Thank you for your blessing over each one. And as us like David rise to your kingdom of praise, Judah, and to the, all of Israel, your new Israel, Raise each one of them to the place of your high calling. Thank you, Father. All the chains are broken. All the eyes are open. And all the spirits have been strengthened and clothed with your spirit of righteousness. With praise and glory. So let each of these taste of the triumph of Christ, of the spirit of the overcomers. Strengthen each angel, guardian angel, 
everyone and cause all to be rocketed into the heights of your glory in the year 2024. We bless you and praise you, Father. Thank you for all that you bless us with, of your goodness and mercy. We worship and praise you. Let 24 hour praise and worship flow from within us to you. Thank you, Father. We worship and bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be blessed. Continue to write down all the remarks and visions you receive and give thanks for them as you pass into the year 2024. God bless each one of you. Amen. Amen. Amen.